Hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, I recently got some books from a company. I'll say the name of the company. It's uh, Bliss on Tap, because uh, I love their books, and uh, I've had good experiences with them in the past. And they sent me a shipment of books uh, from their from their website. And unfortunately, uh, the person that packed those books didn't do a really good job of, of packing those books, and they all arrived damaged, even though they were packed in a Gemini mailer. So I just want to make this video uh, to maybe hopefully help someone who may be packing stuff themselves so they'll know how to package comics, specifically comics, uh, for shipping. So uh, let me show you the problem that they, uh, the, I should say the mistake they made when I got those books damaged is that they shipped it in the mailer, but they put them all in loose, just like this. These are actually the same book, so I can show you the damage too. And they just folded it over like that. You can tell that's never been taped. There's no tape has ever touched this box. And they folded this over and they very gently taped here and they taped there. You know what happens when you do that? Those books are unstable. Those books are just banging around just like this and crashing into each other. And when they drop, and they will drop, and they landed on this corner, and, and that was it. Have you ever seen this uh, TV show, A Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea? And every time they run to some monster under the sea, they'd be crashing around and going from side to side like this. So that's exactly what happened to those books. And that's when they get damaged. Uh, if they, this has been taped properly, these have been like secured together. They will not have been damaged. You see right there, uh, the camera that can focus on it. Um, the damage on those books, uh, every single one of them landed on the corner and there were some good books in here and i've i've cried for those books many many times uh but hopefully we can all learn from this experience uh and people at bliss on tap were very gracious they replaced all these books uh they were good about that but the problem is uh when they replaced those books they were sent <laughs> in this box which okay and they did tape, they did take my advice and tape right here, but I think they lost the, I mean, they didn't get the point, which was uh, to just make them immobile and you would need all this packing. They, they included all these extra backing boards as padding, I guess, and that was totally unnecessary and a waste of resources, added weight to the box that didn't have to be on there, and it could have actually maybe damaged the books more because it was so packed in here that this was this was just unnecessary that they had just taped the books properly which i'm about to show you in a few minutes and do less talking but i just wanted to show you the things that uh prompted me to make this video so let's show you how to properly pack a gemini box to illustrate that i'm going to use this old gemini box it's still pretty sturdy but it's it's, it's been shipped a couple of times and i always keep all my boxes that have some integrity left in them so i can use them over again and i'm going to pack this one comic book and that's all this is all you need and these things are pretty perfect these gemini boxes so as uh, as things go uh, in the world of shipping, they're, they're, they're pretty ingenious. They, they keep comic books perfect as long as you pack them correctly. You can just turn this book uh, face down or you can just use it this way. And now you need to secure the book with some sort of tape. I recommend either um, this is painter's tape. I recommend that or at least at the very least Magic tape. Magic tape is low tack. You want a low tack tape on the books. I'm going to use painter's tape because that's actually the best kind of tape you can use. Cut four pieces. If I was using more books, if I was shifting more than one book, I would need to secure them together somehow with this painter's tape, the low tack tape of some sort, and then tape them into the Gemini mailer. Okay, so I've cut my tape now. I'm going to secure my book in the box. I just line it up with these pre-set folds that they've already so graciously made for you. Line them up against one of the folds. Just one strip of tape. Another. 
third strip and the final strip just to keep it in place. That's all you need. There, there you go. It's not moving. See, it's 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 not moving. It's the most important thing because movement is the enemy of things when you're shipping them. Let me say that again. Movement is your enemy. You don't want things to move around. If they do, they're going to get damaged. Chances are overwhelming. Now the next step, very simple, just fold this over. And now is where you can use your high tack tape, which you should be you should have is some kind of sealing tape, some kind of um packing tape like this. Uh this is like a a four inch roll, which I used to use when I was in shipping, uh, working at a UPS store, but you can get like a, a two inch uh, roll of tape that does the same thing. Tape it, just pull it taut so it's extremely tight and it does not move. Okay, oops, this box is a little old, but it's got one more trip left in it, I can tell. All right, that's not moving. The next step, fold it over and do it all over the box. Try not to bump the camera, otherwise I'll be doing it much more vigorously. Okay, that's that's really all you need. You can add some more tape if you want, if you feel like it, but this is good to go. And listen, no movement, zero movement. This book, I could throw this book out of a window and it would be just fine. Uh, you have to pack things like they're going to be thrown from a truck and maybe run over because they probably will be. All right, so, okay. So say you don't want to buy a Gemini box. All right, that's fine. You know, they're not that expensive, and you can always reuse the one you've already gotten if you're buying comics uh, on your own. Then you can use uh, something like this, which is just two flat pieces of cardboard. That's it. They got to be flat, and they got to be newish. They got to have uh, integrity. They, they can't be bent. You don't want bent, raggedy cardboard. It's useless. Don't want to use that. You take your comic book and you put it in between these two boards. Do it the same method as I use with the Gemini box. Tape it down. Tape this over it with, with use high tack tape because this is going to be uh, it's not touching the comic book and that keeps the, the book shielded. Now you can put this inside of a U.S. Postal Service mailer, priority mailer. You can use some other sort of uh, hard mailer. You can use a Tyvek envelope. I don't have one of those around, but you have someone at the at the, at the Home Depot that can show you what that is. Or you can use some other type of um, envelope. But the thing you don't want to use with comic books is this. Bubble mailers are useless for comic books. I mean, I've heard the horror stories of people saying that they had $1,000 books shipped to them in a bubble mailer, and that's just a damn shame. Now, the bubble mail is only good for trivial things. I I also sell like buttons, and a bubble mailer is fine for those. This is actually a mirror. I would put like a piece of cardboard over this and put it in a bubble mailer, and it'd be just fine. But never use a bubble mailer for a comic book. Number one, no, no. Along with not taping it down and making it sturdy. Now I'm preparing uh, a package, a mystery box that I'm sending out, along with some of my books that I um, print myself. And they're going in one of these, uh, mycomicshop.com sends these boxes with their comics in, it, in them. Uh, and I reuse these as well, because these are, are perfect. And they come with these, let me show you here. And I'm going to put my label over this. I've already got this little label um, pocket that I have from my days at UPS. Uh, if you don't, you can just like uh, tape it on there with regular tape. And they come with these little corner things, which that absorb all the, the movement and all the impact from the corners. I'm just going to take some paper and stuff it in here. Put a bunch of paper in here to take up the movement on this side. There's going to get no movement from side to side. And I've already secured my comics by putting them in a plastic bag. 
if you don't have a plastic bag, use some, some leftover plastic. There's plastic everywhere. So you can find some plastic sheeting or something, even paper. If you have paper, if the worst case scenario, just make sure the books aren't moving. That is the key once again, no movement. I'm gonna use these corners, put this in here, flip it over, it's gonna be good to go. So there's that. So the Gemini box, pretty perfect in its own, in its own right. Um, if not, just use two flat pieces of cardboard. Uh, but just don't ever use a bubble mailer and please don't uh, use a Franken box. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, just remember moving is the enemy and use the Gemini box whenever possible. Peace out. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and leave a thumbs up.